Easy Math 206. We're continuing on with section 12.4, uh, talking about properties of proportion now. Uh, so what we have seen, if we, if we know that two triangles are similar, then the sides are proportional to each other. Well, we can actually extend that and say that if you have a line that's parallel to the base of your triangle, well, first of all, this gives you two triangles that are similar because they share the angle A, and this creates these base angles here, which are congruent because the lines are parallel. These are corresponding angles. So you know that this big triangle is similar to this smaller triangle. And that allows us to say that not only is are the sides of those two triangles proportional, but the segments created by this little line segment here, these segments are proportional to each other as well. So let's find the missing side here. Let me call that X. So if I know that these two lines are parallel, then I can set up a proportion. I can say X is to 8 as 18 is to 12. Now, just a quick word here. This is not the only proportion I could have set up. I could have otherwise said 8 is to X as 12 is 18, or I could have said x is to 18 as 8 is to 12, or I could have said 18 is to x as 12 is to 8. I could have, this is four different proportions that actually describe, describes the same relationship. With proportions, what you really need to do is maintain consistency. If my first fraction compares these two quantities, then my second fraction should compare the same two quantities, in, or the quantities that are in the same relative position. All right. So let's go ahead and pick any one of these and solve for x. I'll do the shortcut of cross multiplying. So 12 times x, I get 12x on the left hand side. 8 times 18, that's 144 on the right hand side. And then dividing both sides by 12, I get x equals 12. All right, now if you took a different route and used any one of these proportions, you should have gotten the same exact answer. Yeah. All right, so this gives us um, actually some more interesting constructions. And this will be our last construction for the unit. Uh, and that is that uh, parallel lines cut off congruent, if, if a parallel line uh, cuts off congruent segments on one side of the triangle, then because this, uh, these segments must be uh, proportional to each other, then it must cut off congruent segments on the other side of the triangle as well. And this gives us a way to take a line segment and chop it up into equal size pieces, uh, which, which sounds like it's a, a pretty hard construction to do. But with our new ideas, it'll be quick. So step one here, I'm trying to chop this AB segment into equal size pieces. Uh, what I'll do is first draw in a transversal through the vertex A. And then I'll use that transversal to just uh, subdivide as many segments as I need. So suppose I want to have three, I want to chop AB up into three equal size pieces. Then I'll set my compass to any length as long as it's small enough for me to, uh, to not go off of my paper here. And I'll set my compass at point A and draw a marking there, same length, draw another marking, same length, draw another marking. So that gives me these three points here, and you can name them whatever you like, A1, A2, A3. All right, and now what you need to do is to connect A3, the last marking that you made, to the end of your, 
the end of your line segment. And now I need to construct lines that are parallel to this segment because then that will give me equal size pieces uh, coming from these intersection points as well. All right, and if you remember, at the, at, uh, in section 12.3, we had some methods for constructing parallel lines. I will use the rhombus method because I think it's the easiest. So um, I'll take this distance here that I had already used and use it to make a marking from A3. And then an arc from that intersection point. And an arc from A2 as well. So again, this was one, two, three, four uh, vertices of my rhombus. Let me go ahead and connect a2 to this last vertex that I just made. There we go. So now these two lines are parallel. Let's do it again from A2. We've got this distance, same distance that's here. Now make a marking from this intersection point, and then a marking here for me one. So that gives me the fourth vertex in the rhombus from A1, A2, this point, um, which will give me a line parallel to this one, which is parallel to that one, the base of this triangle that I made. All right, and these parallel lines have chopped my segment AB up into three equal sized pieces.